Alright. Minha, minha linha.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. On behalf of the Washington Regional Head, Apostle Andrew Zdonko, I want to welcome you all to this uh, homegoing ceremony of our mother, Mrs. Irene Ben Owusu. We want to begin the service in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit by inviting Mrs. Beatrice Boating to lead us in a time of prayer. I and die die Oh, <laughs> 
says in all things in all things in all circumstances in all challenges we should give thanks to the Lord God Almighty for this is the will of Christ Jesus we are all going to give thanks to our God and our maker the one who knows everything the one who sees everything let us give him praise let us give him thanks our Lord and our Master, let us be on our feet, please. We give you all the praise this morning. We give you all the time. We give you all to you. You are the one who gave it all to us. And in your own time, you have taken her into your glory. glory. We shall bless be your holy name. Immortal, invisible, the only wise king. 
This morning we thank you. This morning we thank you. Daddy, we thank you. Daddy, we bless you. Daddy, we glorify your name for what you have done. For what you have done. We give you all to you. We bless your holy name. We give you glory. We give you glory, our Lord and our Master. Oh, Nyame Tufu, Aye, Kuche, Aye, Kuche, Silence. Immortal, invisible, the only wise king, who can we compare unto you? Indeed, you are the God eternal, Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. Everything that we see on this planet will pass away. Everything will change, but you remain the same. You are the unchangeable. You are the eternal God, Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. That in this morning, we give you all the glory. This morning, we give you all the praise. 
you gave our sister unto us. And in your own time, in your own time, you have taken her back to your glory. Let that be your holy name. We thank you, God. Father, we pray. Come in the whole service into your hands. May you all go reign to pray. Have your own way. Lead us and direct us. You come in the family into your hands. May you strengthen them. May you comfort them. May you go so them in this time. Oh, may your beings oh, reign through their minds, their hearts, their soul, and their entire body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Mrs. Quateng. Um, if you need a program, if you didn't get the printed one, we have a, a QR code available uh, with the ushers. Uh, so if you need one, you can raise your hand or they will come around and you can scan and have the whole program on your phone. At this moment, we want to take some songs from Pastor Amiel and Co. Okay. Shall we please be on our feet? Na kwani na aya pa aya aya pa na chumbo hallelujah na kwani na aya pa aya pa na kwani na Oh, <laughs> 
I have another one. I have another one. Amen. This homegoing um, celebration has brought a lot of men and women of God and all of us gathered here today. And I want to take a few moments to do some introductions. We want to recognize the family. And at uh, this point, we want to introduce to you Bishop Akwesi Edu Amankwa is here with us. Uh, of course, and then we have... Uh, Apostle Emmanuel Inkum also in the house, all the way from Ghana, recognize you. We have our evangelist, Stephen Omani Yaboa, retired, all the way from Atlanta. We have uh, our retired minister, David Ntiamwa and wife, all the way from Ghana. We also have all the ministers, all the ministers of COP USA and their spouses in the house. Can we please see you? All ministers, all ministers of COP, come on. Yes, so they are represented from all the regions and all the districts in the nation. We also have the national uh, office staff here. Our national deacon is here. Our director of finance is here. That's Elder Dr. Wabe, and Elder Robert Nyako. Is he here? All right, God bless you for coming. We have our national administrative manager also here. We also have the director of IT also in the house. We also have the director of our youth ministry, Apostle Dr. George and Dr. Mrs. Cynthia Porterfield in the house. We have 
the regional head, um, Pastor Joseph Jenfi from Chicago and wife. We have uh, Pastor Joseph Entry, Atlanta regional head. We have Pastor uh, and Mrs. Boateng of Colorado region. We have Apostle and Mrs. Stephen Amponsa from California, regional head. Apostle and Mrs. Augustus Asemino, New Jersey regional head. Apostle Dr. Mbanyani uh, Mohango, executive member and president of the Pentecost Biblical Seminary. We also have Apostle Dr. and Mrs. John Kwame Apia, all the way from New York region, an executive member of our church here in the United States. And as I said, Apostle Andrews Donko is out of state and I'm standing in for him. His wife, Mrs. Evelyn Donko is also in the house, executive member. We also have Apostle and Mrs. Samuel Kwesi Ava, all the way from Texas region, they are also in the house. We have Apostle um, Samson and Mrs. Millicent Ofori Yadom, all the way from New England region, the original head for New England. We have in the house our National Secretary, Apostle and Mrs. Apostle John and Mrs. Margaret Ofori, all the way from Ohio. Thank you so very much. We have the National Head uh, from Dominican Republic here with us today, Pastor Michael Tete and why? All the way from, uh, where is he? Dominican. Dominican Republic. Thank you for coming. We also have Pastor and Mrs. Um, uh, Forsen, Samuel Forsen here with a wife all the way from, that's the uh, national head for Jamaica. And today in the seat um, to facilitate and to chair this occasion is our own national head, uh, Apostle Michael Ajiman Amwakon and wife, Mrs. Sheila Amwakon. They are going to chair everything. My name is John Ansa. I'm from Maryland and my wife, Florence, is also here. Amen. Uh, so the family is right here. We have our pastor, Elder Perry, Raphael, um, Samuel, Samuel and, um, and John here and uh, our Mrs. Uh, Owusu's mom and family, you are all here. We want to recognize your presence. Amen. Amen. Uh, at this moment, we want to do some welcome songs and we're gonna put everything together quickly. We want to call New York, New England and New Jersey region. Uh, maybe you have a few of you come up front here and bring your welcome song. New York, New Jersey, New England. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank we want to welcome you all. At this moment, we want to call Chicago region, Ohio region, Texas, and California. The four of you, Chicago, Ohio, Texas, and California. Please bring your welcome song. <laughs> Oh, it's a sing, oh, it's a sing, oh, it's a sing, 
Isha sing o sana Isha sing o sana Isha sing o sana Dance in our land of glory Isha sing o sana Sina <laughs> The protocol committee uh, has informed me that we have so many guests standing outside. So if we're a Richmond uh, church member, we would humbly ask you to yield your seat uh, so that we can seat uh, some of the pastors and visitors coming. Thank you very much. At this moment, we want to call Washington region, Atlanta region, and Maryland region. Maryland, Washington, and Atlanta. Thank you. Oh, 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 I have another one in you, in you. I have another one. Amen. Welcome, welcome. God bless you for coming. At this moment, we want to invite uh, Colorado region. That is where our mother used to serve. So Colorado region, please bring your song. Can I go to Can I go to so I will invite our national head. Nah, yeah. The IT team, the technical team, please help us put our fathers on the line. Nah, yeah. Yeah, nah, boy. So, here, nah, yeah. 
We continue to thank the Lord God Almighty for what he is doing in his church and the life of our dear mother, sister, our wife, and pastor's wife. Because of this ceremony, we have all our ministers across the globe, the leaders on the line. And most importantly, we have our chairman, IMD, and other leadership on the line. At this moment, without much I do, with standing ovation, shall we welcome the IMD, the International Missions Director, Apostle Emmanuel Ajeman Bequin. Okay. Hello, praise the Lord. Praise the name of the living God. Thank you very much, Apostle Amwaku, for the introduction. Please, am I being heard? Hello, praise the Lord.
Halo, apa Zul? Halo. Halo, apa Zul? Eh, so you can hear me. And then Anka, eh, they should just put me on so that I can give the message and then leave. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, okay. Okay. Oh, let me try this place. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, National Head, Apostle Amwakun, the National Executive Council of the Church in the USA. And I bring you greetings from the Chairman of the Church of Pentecost, the General Secretary, and the Executive Council. We are currently having our meeting, and I've been asked to stand in their stead to comfort the widower and to encourage the family that the Lord knoweth them that are his in these times and that we praise the Lord for our sister and our family, we console with you, with the church in the USA and we will continue to pray with you. Our hearts are with you in this period of grief and we pray that the Lord himself shall sustain you through and through. I will pray a prayer of thanksgiving um, if we can. Close our eyes if you can. Let's pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Father, we thank you. We thank you that all things pass before you. That in you all things hold together. 
We thank you for this moment, O oh God. You knew it was coming, and yet you allowed it to happen. We thank you for our brother who has lost a loved one. We thank you for the family. We thank you for the church. And we thank you for all. We pray in this moment, O oh God, that you will hold us together. You put our fragmented pieces together and that we are devastated, but you will give us hope for you are our hope. Our sister has left this world, but our sister is alive. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We pray for the rest of the program, O oh God. We ask that your hand shall be lifted up, that all will see your glory, to understand you and to know you better. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Shall we say amen? May the Lord bless you. This we can continue. For we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Amen. So, the King Tao, according to Paul Mark, just who is you, the P and Nom to Chemo Bark, the coffee and two. To my name, sir. The winner Julian assassin son to Madame Yea. You be not a fear, a free on your couple. A dinner, one fan for NC. I was a da or so. If we say, Ye moody, you see a penny, I am a knee, a dinner set, ye bet shed in fear, a free strong of us. A non answer ye shah, oh, who ye not a gin. I am not a chain to Madame Yemuny. Let's see a penny na a science if we say, and say, say, you better add a jar. A mummy per se, a chef was so. Nanqua, a many dear, a woo. A dear was ye see yen a massa, a dear yen on yon coupon, or no one cassa de home no, Jehan so a mayen, Jemuncia. And tea, a shy and one day, da, a yen am say. Yet if ye a winny pedium, ye and chief ye a war, a radiant chain, if we say, then I'm giddyum, na and yet any home so. My was sa, I wish him we, my young fair a mum say, ye be free ni pedium, fee ha, a cotina if ye war a radiant chain. And tin so ye bomb what then say, 
Say a one nipped yamu if you ye free ho ye best on any. Now you can say yen yana copy twist to a timbo a jano and limo. Now biara en ya de or nam ni pedi also ye and papo bonio said ye or ye on ya miasin amen. Thank you very much. Shall we stand us? We take one hymn. Now we invite. There's a land that is forever. Page 21. It's on page 21. So we'll start again. There's a land that is fair And by faith we can see it For the to bring the in the sweet, in the sweet, in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that big mountain for Oh, in the sweet by and by. We shall be on that beautiful song. We shall sing on that beautiful song. The man of the not as I fall, blessing of breath in the sweet, in the sweet, in the sweet, we shall be on the beautiful soul in the sweet, in the sweet, by and by. We shall be on the beautiful soul to our bountiful Father of We will all fall into the praise for the glorious and of His love. And the blessing that all of the in the sweet, in the sweet, oh, amen. we shall be, we shall be on the beautiful soul in the sweet, in the sweet, amen. We shall be At this moment, we're going to take the biography, and right thereafter, we'll take the tribute, and it will go in this order the widower, the children, the family, Las Vegas district, Colorado region, and then the COP USA in that order. So I want to invite the one who is going to give us the biography for the family. Hallelujah. Um, I'm going to read the biography of the late Mrs. Irene Ben Osu. Friends and family stick together through all kinds of weather. And that families stick together in all kinds of adversity. Proverbs chapter 17, verses 17. We are gathered here today in the memory of a daughter, sister, mother, wife, and a friend. Irene Ben was also known in the family circles as Equia 
Wachua, aka Kukua, by all friends, lovers, and church members for which together we acknowledge and share both the joy, spiritual gifts that her life, as well as the pain that her passing away has brought to us and the entire Ben, Ousu, and Yawson families alike. Irene was born in Ejumaku Besiyase on September 20th, 1972, to the late Ekor Ben of Anona family of Ejumaku Besiyase and Kumase Boshain, and Mrs. Grace Bennett Yawson of Ekorna family of Ejumaku Besiyase and Ejumaku Owane in the central region of Ghana. Kukwa was the eldest daughter of four siblings to the family's aforementioned. She demonstrated learning qualities at a tender age and therefore started her elementary education at Bantama Kumasi for which she completed successfully with a middle school living certificate. She later enrolled at Aguna SDA Secondary School where she was asked by her father's family to drop out and become a hairdresser. Later in 1996, she came to the United States of America through her uncle, Mr. Atoben, currently in Brooklyn, New York. Like any woman's desire in life, she found love with Mr. John Kenneth Ousu, now a pastor of the Church of Pentecost, USA. And they married, and they got married in holy matrimony at the Abundant Life Assemblies of God Church, Bosheng, Edumanu Kumase where both of them were fellowshipping. While in the United States, she joined the Church of Pentecost. Her spiritual life was a testimony to all, a devout Christian with exemplary qualities and leadership. She was innovative, principled, devoted to God's work and a peace-loving woman. Osafamami Irene had a passion for music and she sang everywhere, including church services, convention, and joyous occasions such as weddings. She credited to herself a lot of albums and later created the church and a house for which she built many families up through praise and worship. Though Irene is gone to her maker, her voice will still be heard. She became ill in 2020 and finally passed away on February 21st, 2022. She later left four children, namely Elder Perry, Asari Ousu, Samuel Osei Ousu, John Kenneth Ousu Jr., and Raphael Thomas Ousu II, a grandson, Perry Jason Asari Ousu, and one daughter in law, Mrs. Kukwa Asari Ousu, and three siblings to the glory of God. Ekwa Bwachua, God be with you on your journey to your Creator, and surely we will meet again. Demi Fadri, and rest in the perfect peace of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I want to, first of all, before reading this tribute, express our heartfelt appreciation to you all on behalf of my sweetheart. That is what she would have done when he sees people standing in for her. So on behalf of her and the boys, we would like to say God richly bless you all for coming to grace this occasion of her home going. We also want to express our appreciation uh, to our chairman, Apostle Eric Nyamiche, General Secretary, the IMD, our national head. God richly bless you. 
He's been there with us through thick and thin. And the national executives, all our regional heads, God richly bless you. Colleague ministers and all members of the Church of Pentecost United States and all family, friends, and loved ones, we say may the Lord richly, richly bless you all. And there are two people uh, besides me that I want to mention their name here that were the three inner circle of my wife. And her prayer partner besides me, Dr. Joyce Nyako. Dr. Joyce, are you here? Okay. And uh, her friend, Sofumame Araba Ofori coming all the way from Ghana. God richly bless you. Uh, she was the one sitting by her when she was singing as we watched it. Came all the way from Ghana to Las Vegas just to visit her at the hospital. God richly bless you. And we appreciate you all because that is her heart desire. She appreciates every little thing that you will do for her and always will find a way to put smiles at her face and on people's face. You wouldn't be around her and she will make you feel sad. She will always make you feel important. And that is such a precious soul that we have missed and not in our midst this uh, morning. We all prayed, and God Almighty, the one whom my sweetheart and myself said, and will continue to serve till he also takes us away from this earth. He answered our prayers. And we are seeing this. Therefore, we give him all the glory. Because as we all know as believers, she is more alive even than ever. So we don't let death discourage us. Though the pain it might bring, though the challenges it brings, it's still there. But we trust in our God. Because she passed on the battlefield and it can happen to anybody no matter what but we don't let death discourage us, but we give all the glory to our maker. And can you all join me in saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank the Lord. And just as in one of her, uh, her church in the house, if you are listening to it, she says in every circumstance, give thanks to the Lord, no matter what. So while doing church in the house, she was speaking to us about her departure so that we will encourage ourselves even in difficult times. So we are encouraged even in this difficult time because she is more alive than ever. Paul said absence from the body means presence with the Lord. And we thank the Lord for what he has done. And we give him all the glory. Because we know that one day, one day, we will see her. Sweetheart, it took me many days to be able to write this tribute. Because any time that I sit down to write Tears flood my eyes. And the deep pain of your departure is felt deep within my heart. When I realize that you are no more physically with us, it's been very difficult and challenging to come to the realization that you have left us. But I thank the Lord that I had the opportunity to pay my tribute to you when you were alive than when you were gone. When you celebrated my 
50th birthday. And we all gathered and gave glory to the Lord. Had that opportunity when you were alive to express my heartfelt appreciation to you. And I thank the Lord for that. I first saw my wife when we were teenagers and I was passing in front of their house called Coffee House at Boshe and Kumasi one evening in 1985 when she was selling fried egg. Upon catching a glimpse of her natural beauty, I desired in my heart that she would one day become my wife. The Lord granted this her desire few years later when we all became members of Abandoned Life Assemblies of God in Boshen, Edmund, Kumasi. So she is my, heart, my high school sweetheart. And not only my heart, school sweetheart, but the only woman on earth that I've ever fallen in love with. When we decided to get married, her late father delayed the marriage for over four years, thinking that I might lose interest in her while pursuing my education at uh, KNUST, those of us from Ghana know the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. So he thought that I might go for another person. But our love even grew all the more with time, even in the midst of family challenges, and eventually we got married. When she traveled to the United States, we could talk hours on end, about eight hours a day, literally, every day, to the extent that when we check the phone bills at that time, it could build a mansion. But we built a mansion of close and inseparable relationship through phone conversation listening to each other and talking to each other hours on end. When I joined her in the United States, we resolved that our marriage and family will be the number one priority in our lives. This determination fashioned our life to do literally everything together. These Bible verses became the pillar of our marriage. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Sweetheart, who do I call when I need someone to talk to? Who will be my prayer partner? Who will be my ministry partner? Who am I going to share ideas with? 
Who am I going to plan with? Who do I eat with? Who do I travel with? Who do I raise the boys with? Who will sit in and give advice, the motherly advice during our family gathering and our weekly Friday night family meetings? and during family devotions. Who will love me unconditionally as you did? Who will sleep by my side and encourage me when I'm down? Who will sing the melodious songs when the family gather? to play instruments to glorify the name of the Lord. The week before her departure, we thank the Lord that we had the opportunity and it was all full of praise to the Lord. We will bring the instruments down to the bed which she was and we will play instruments and we will all sing together. And in spite of her illness, we'll still give glory to the Lord. That is such a wonderful person that has departed from our midst. Your compassion, hospitality, selflessness, and giving spirit will forever be remembered. And through that, we have gained a lot of precious people into our family. Your spiritual gifts will forever be remembered because nothing will ever happen in our family without the Lord revealing to us. And most of the time, even if some, before somebody comes our way, the Lord will reveal it to her. She is such a gifted person that she will see you the first day and will be able to tell what you will come and do, which help in our ministry a lot. And help us to select our friends because before you will come, the Lord will reveal to her what that person will do. So we miss this spiritual gift as a family and as a church. You made me a better person through your virtuous life. You were an example to many and a mother to many. You always found it in your heart to forgive and live at peace with all people, including me. You were truly the ideal woman the Bible talks about in the book of Proverbs. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but sweetheart, you surpass them all. I thank God that I had the opportunity to be your husband. And I thank you for spending the better part of your short life on earth with me. Perry, Samuel, John Jr. and Raphael, say thank you. We will always remember your words during our last family meeting when you told the boys to always 
read the Bible, pray, and trust in the Lord. And most especially, the advice you give us in one of your songs, your favorite program, Church in the House. In every situation, no matter what, the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And we accept the will of God unconditionally. We will never question our God that we are serving. Time will not permit me to say it all. So I'll put the rest of my tribute in these songs because she loves communicating in songs. When even we got married, we will express our love to each other in songs, communicating with each other in songs. So I cannot finish this tribute without singing a song which will better communicate. Trials dark on every hand and we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land but he will guide us with his eyes and we will follow till we die we will understand it better by and by oh by and by when the morning comes, oh, when the saints of God are gathered, we will tell our story how we overcome. We will understand. Of our cherished plans are filled, disappointments have prevailed, and we've wandered in Las Vegas, heavy hearted and alone, but we're trusting in the Lord. And according to his word, sweet that we will understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by. Oh, when. The sins of God are gathered. Oh, we will tell our story. We will understand it better by man. Temptations, hidden snares. Often take us on our ways, and our hearts are made to bleed for some thoughtless words or deed. We were trusting in the Lord when we try to do our best, 
but we will understand it better by and by. Let me sing that again. Temptations, it is less, often take us on our words, and our hearts are made to bleed for some thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder why the tests when we try to do our best, we will understand it better when the seeds of God are granted, oh, we will tell us all how we know we will understand it better. Sweet that in the sweet. By and by, we shall sit on that beautiful shore in the sweet, in the sweet by and by, we shall sit on that beautiful there is a land that is fair and by faith we can see it afar but you have seen it with us for the father we saw for I know the father has welcomed you already to prepare us and work. And you are living in your dwelling place. Oh, in the sweet, in the sweet, by and by. Sweet art, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Oh, in the sweet, by and by, we shall be on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore, which I know you are singing. The melody of song, song. The one that you bless us whilst on earth, and the asking shall for Oh, for the glory of his and the blessing that our lips are Oh, in the sweet. By and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Oh, in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on Sweet. 
He shall eat all that he beautiful shall eat the sweet by and by. He shall have all that he beautiful shall Sweet that. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet again on that beautiful land. I will forever miss you. And I will always love you, even in death. Rest in perfect peace, sweetheart, till we meet again. I love you. Amen. I was really hoping I wouldn't have to write this for a long time. Mom was a person who had unconditional love. I was able to go to her with any problem that I had, whether it could be school matters, mental matters, or just to talk to her and share stories back and forth. She was always happy when she was around us and didn't eat just to make sure that we were eating well. She would always tell us to be positive in any situation that could happen. She was never really angry at us and was a very peaceful person. I was able to joke with her and we would laugh together, making my day so much better. Mom. Mom would always tell us to read our Bible and pray to make sure that we would have a good relationship with God. She raised us well, up in love, compassion, and godliness. One thing that, would really, that really made us happy was when she would cook for us. She would always make the most delicious meals and would always let one of us test it to make sure that it was good and everything was to our liking. She would always tell us to eat in a way that we could all have some for tomorrow, even though we all knew that it would finish by the night because it was so good. <laughs> when she got sick, she would still continue to cook for us even through the pain. Even while she was sick, she would make sure to find time and strength to come to our event at school. She would always help us to she would always help us to the best of her ability all the way all the way till she couldn't do it anymore. Mom, I wish you could have at least lived to see all of us get married and see your grandkids. I miss you so much, but I know when the time is right, we will meet together in heaven. I will always love you so much and remember all the good things, all the good times and bad times we had and the teachings you gave me and the family. Thank you. Mom, well, I never thought I would be writing this so soon. I miss you so much. I wish you were here right now. I wish you didn't leave this early in my life. I wasn't ready for this to happen. It was, it was too soon. Every day I think about you being here with us and then the moment of realization comes in and I become so sad. There are times in my life where I wish you were here so I could talk to you and tell you everything. But I'm thankful for God for giving you to us for so long. 
I'm happy with the time I spent, and I wish we could have had more memories to share. You have helped this family a lot, and we wouldn't be like this without you, the only woman in the family. Every moment I spent with you, I enjoyed so much. I will never forget all the times we spent together where we talked, watched the TV shows, and we were laughing, or when I helped you out in the kitchen. I do wish that you were here to see me grow. I wish I could see your smile just one more time. I really wish I was I was there to, to see you smile before you left. <laughs> but I do know you're in a better place where there's nothing but smiling, and that is all I want for you, which is to be happy and, and not to have to worry about anything. And I got my answer to my prayer. I will continue to trust in God and read my Bible, just as you have said. And I promise that one day I will see you again and we will all be together as a family. I know that you left us a few days before my birthday, but I like to think of it as me being the first one in the family celebrating my birthday knowing that you are truly happy and healed. You said you saw me in a dream where I was gonna, where I was doing so well that I was with the president. So I'll, I'll make that happen and make you proud. I love you and I know that you're watching over us and seeing all of us grow. Um, I, I give anything to just get even five more minutes with you. I always imagine you being present in my future, as you always were. Imagine you being at my wedding, graduations, and the birth of your grandchildren and many more events. Imagine growing up and buying you a dream car, Nissan Armada, that you always talked about. But God had different plans for you. Even though we down here feel the pain of your departure, we know you are doing extremely better than you were when you were with us. My mother was the most selfless, loving, and funniest person I knew. We could sit together and watch sitcoms and family feud and just laugh together. Watching movies with her was an experience because I would always have to explain everything to her. <laughs> I could, go every, I could go to her about anything. Even when she was very weak, she made it a point to make it to all of my school events and would cheer me on. When she couldn't make it, she would find a way to watch the recording and still cheer me on. With her around, I felt like I was on top of the world. We would sometimes take walks together and just talk about anything. She always told me not to fear because the world was with me and would always recite Philippians 13 to me and my brothers when we were reluctant to do anything. While your loss has left a big dent in me, I know you will always be watching me from above and cheering me on with Jesus when it's hard. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. The Bible says that we believe that you don't more like the rest of so I want to hear a big after amen. Hallelujah. I want to say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, first of all, I'd like you to help me thank God for her life. This is the clap of her, if you don't mind. And then also one more from my father, and I'll tell you why in a second. Amen. She has been going through this for right after I got married. I got married in June. 
uh, ending of June, pretty much. Uh, she was diagnosed in July, right before she was leaving to go back home. And she's been fighting because it's, it was a constant non-stop pain, but she won't show it. And she will fight and fight and fight. And now saying, help me thank my father because I was here because I also have my own family to raise. But he was going back and forth, cooking, cleaning, taking care of the kids, taking care of her back and forth. No option left unturned. No money not spent. No thing that we didn't try. Anything that he even seemed like it was a slight possibility, he put in the effort to see the best that he could do to make sure that she would be well. And that's a true testament of love. And it showed how much we would do for her because we will go to any extent of the world. Uh, I'm such a person that you could talk about it, you can insult me and I'm okay. But if you talk about my mom, you're gonna have a problem. And that shows that we all here and they know it too, that we love her more than anything in, in this world. Uh, she was a, uh, she was a very special person, uh, as in the way she displayed her character to, to people. If she didn't let too many people close, because she, like my father would say, she would see what kind of person you are before you even get close to her or anybody around. A lot of the people, friends, and so that come my way, like, no, no, this person. And, and it's, not, it's not a joke. She would tell you exactly the person's character. Uh, it even some, I could even go to the extent that I could call her a whole prophet because God would show her things ahead of time before it even happened. She knew this would happen. Uh, it was in 2019 before they moved to, uh, to Vegas. Uh, it was one Sunday morning and she woke up and you could tell that she had cried in her sleep. She was very, very distraught. She didn't understand the dream that she just had. So she was very confused. So that was the only Sunday that since I've entered America that she didn't go to church because she was very confused. She didn't understand what was happening in the dream. And she shared with me, I stayed with her. Uh, she told me and, and then we prayed. Uh, she was saying that she saw that she was walking through water and it was very, very hot and it was almost up to her neck. But then she was still fighting her way through. So we prayed about it and, and we, we stayed there the whole day. I haven't had recordings of that day. Uh, we prayed, we read the Bible, some Bible verses. And after that, uh, we, went, we went on our day. And once this happened and everything was starting to build, we kind of understood what God was telling her at that time. Uh, even in her sickness, as you can see in the video, uh, she always praised God. Uh, I remember when she came to help me take care of my, my, my boy after he was born, she wanted to do songs. She wanted to record songs. And the church in the house thing that she used to send out, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time to put all that stuff together. And she wanted to do a lot of them. No, 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 we don't have this time. At least make it every two weeks so that it could be sustainable. And I just said that, but she called me later in a, in a room and with tears in her eyes, she told me that this is what God has given me. And I want to be able to give it out to the world so that when it all ends, when it's all over, uh, I'll be able to go back to my maker and tell her how that the things that he gave me, the gifts that he gave me, I have used it to a purpose. I'm, I'm telling you a lot of these things just to let you know the, the type of relationship me and her had. There's not, if you take my father's side, there's not a secret in the world that she has that I don't know, both personally, spiritually, everything that, that she ever thinks about, suggestion, she comes to me and, and talk to me about it. 
uh, even when he's making decisions, certain things, only I'm the only person who could get her to do it. Doesn't matter who comes. And I value that and I cherish that. And I will miss that greatly because we talked every day. Uh, I, I used to call her during my lunchtime. We stay on the phone for hours on the end and talk about everything and nothing at the same time. And sometimes we just stay on the phone and she just be there and we won't say anything, but we still, uh, we still enjoyed and shared all those uh, moments. Uh, and I, I was saying, and I wrote this down, but it says that death is setting, right? Everybody's gonna die eventually, uh, but nobody wants to die. And it's, 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 it's funny because it's guaranteed, but yet nobody wants to get there. I was telling one of my friends the other day that I think it would be best, right? If we were actually happy for her because where she is now, it is where we all striving to get to. So if she's there now, why must we decide? And that's what have kept me going so far right? with, the, with the knowledge that she has reached her destination. And now we are all matching to, to meet her uh, e e eventually. Uh, I'll, I, I don't wanna take much of your time, but I know one thing that I was in the, I haven't really had time, there's too many things to do. So I, I haven't had time to, to grieve and cry and do the things that I want to do because it's a lot of things that I had to handle. But I remember uh, last week or so, I think I was in the shower and I forgot conversations and things where that I'm hearing and things that we have to do. And I'm sitting there and a song came and this is one of her songs that, uh, that, that she sang on, on the album that she created when she was in Richmond here. And the reason why we're even all here is because she told me to go to the church where we would go bury her, to go there and find out, this is last year when she came, to go find out what the requirements are or what it would take for her to be buried there if she died. And I'm like, why would you even say that? Don't, don't talk like that. And we joked about it, we laughed about it. It's just like, well, me, I've, me, I've told you what I want. So that's it. And then we just left it at like that. So that's why we are even here. But one of the songs that she made when she was in Richmond here, it says, uh, Mawaniso, right? And I was in the shower and the, the, there's a line in the, in the song that came to heart. that says, Washaya Mbose, Arin Jaye, Se Yesu Frena, Abedji Yesu. Se Yesu Washaya Mbose, Arin Jaye. And two weeks before, three weeks before she passed, I went to Vegas. And a week before I went there, she called. Actually, I called. I called my dad because usually she don't pick up her phone. So I called my dad and we were talking. And she jumped out her back. It's like, Perry, call your wife. I'm like, okay. So I went and got my, my wife. And we sat down. And then we grabbed the phone. And then she was talking. And I leave this, the same message that he gave me, uh, I'll share with you. Uh, she said that in life, all the things that we used to worry ourselves, she's telling even especially to my wife, that the hair, the nails, the, the clothes, the things that is unnecessary that we, we used to battle ourselves with, a time will come that it won't mean anything. And the only thing that will matter is the life that you have. And we shouldn't forget that in everything that we do. Uh, she also said that we should serve God with all of our hearts, uh, not to worry about what people will say, but just openly with it from the bottom of our heart, serve God. And then lastly, she told me that we should be hospitable, right? So we, I said, I say, Monji Ahoho. And she just said that. And she, with that, she was crying. And I told her that, uh, Madam, don't, don't, don't do that right now. We, we had that, if you didn't know the way we were, and you heard me talking to my mom, you might even call me disrespectful. But that was the type of friendship that, that we had. First of Madam, Now, then she just said it. So as soon as I got there, a few days in there, they couldn't even get her to eat. She couldn't eat. So, I was the only person that said her 
and then I'll force her to eat. And I'll, anybody else, it wouldn't work. I was the only person, and I think a few days before she went to the hospital, she looked at me, because I still had to take her to the bathroom, and she would tell me that, I'm sure my name is Diana Perry. It is good that you came. And I didn't understand it then, but I do now. That that was a way of saying goodbye. I miss you. I love you, my, my, my best friend. I remember Apostle Asamuel told me to, to leave my mom and, and go find me a wife. Because, yeah, because, because everywhere you see her, I'm, I'm, next to, I'm next to her. Either with her bag in my hand and, 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 her, and I'm holding her hand too. But in all, we give thanks to God. Amen. Can I have my mic? Amen. So, yeah, with the rest of the tributes, we want to do it very quickly because our time uh, to the cemetery is coming. So family, representative, you have a tribute? Okay. Then I will call the church. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Please. Um, Every family member can come uh, come around, uh, Ben family, and every family member. Please, Brakwe uh, Ben, if you are here, we were looking for you, and uh, spouses, you can come around. Uh, we will um, apologize uh, for I know the time is already spent, but we will. Uh, this is our last time with our daughter. And please bear with us. The family has a, a song for Kukwa, as we affectionately call. And it is pleasant at thy courts above in the land of light and love. Pleasant are thy course below in this land of sin and woe. Oh, my spirit longs and woe, my spirit, my spirit longs and faints for the converse of thy saints, for the uh, brightness of thy face, for thy fullness, God of grace. In the verse two, you say, happy birth, that sang and fly, round thy altars, O most high. Happier souls that find a rest in a heavenly father's breast. Like the wandering dove that found no repose on earth around, they can to their ark repair and enjoy it ever there. I would like to sing the verse two as a song to see our daughter to meet as she goes to meet. A creator. Happy birth, the sing and fly. Round thy altars, O Musa. Happy as those that find the rest. In the Father's breath, like the wandering dove that found no repose on earth around, they can Prepare and enjoy it, Father. What's in that? Sibia was and called on the 
no more. I would like, you know, to let John know that we are with him in every step of the way. We are family from the father's side. And John knows her relationship with us. as a family that she grew up in all her life. She is like, she's a niece, a daughter, but she is like our sister, little sister. Some of us spoke to her about three weeks she passed out. Unexpectedly, we didn't know, but as we don't understand many things, we cannot also question God. We are here today and we cannot forget the grandmother that helped brought Kukua up from her childhood. <clears throat> Madame Jane Kwanza did a very good job. And her father, the decision for her to drop out of school was not taken lightly. It was a good decision at that time. Also, the family loved her so much and my big brother here is the one that comes after his father, after her father. He, call, he came home and said, Kukwa, I'm going to take you to America. And so he is the one that brought her to United States. So, you know, she lived with them uh, and her wife. And yes, we are one big family. And God betrothed her to Pastor John Owusu. We've never have any time apart. Today, we are in pain, but we celebrate her. We celebrate her in our heart. The tears will never stop. This experience will live with us. At this point, I will leave Uncle Ben Senior to give a little tribute. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hello. I'm here to read the tribute from the Ben family. The righteous man perish and no one leads to her. The boy men are taken away why on one understands. For the righteous man is taken away from calamity. He enters into peace. The rest of their beds who walk in their uprightness. Isaiah 57, 1 to 2. Where do we even start, brothers and sisters? How do we even begin a final farewell when we say cannot believe that Aaron is born for good? How do we even bid farewell to part of our souls? How do we even reconcile with the fact that overnight, Irina has slipped from the bonds of the earth to touch the face of the Lord? Irina was deeply committed to her work and faith in every God. It's this relationship that guided and shaped who she was to her very last breath. Whether it is teaching of the word of the Lord or singing praises to glorify God, she wasn't once found in want. Irene had a passion for love, acceptance for people from all walks of life, and unacquaintable desire to always be a better person. Irene was, to say the least, an unconfrontational person, 
she would rather walk away from a winnable argument than to be contentious. It is any, it is, is it any wonder then that the very essence of her name, Irene, literally means peace? Though today our heads are bowed and our hearts are heavily laden with sorrow and uncertainty, we take consolation in that very peace promised to us by our Lord Jesus. Peace I live with you. May peace I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled or be afraid. John 14, 27. Irene has left an indelible impression upon the entire Ben family, and we shall be forever deeply grateful to her and consider ourselves blessed to have had her as a relation, a relative. And even though her song here on earth has ended, her melody will linger on earth. Her melody will linger on with us for many years to come. She leaves behind a huge emptiness in the heart of all who knew and loved her and to those who had dreamed of her through the Ben family. She would deeply, deeply missed. May God, may good Lord grant you an eternal peace until we meet again. Let's put our hands together for the family. Oh, Thank you. Amen. All right. So we are pressed uh, with time. So um, the tribute from Las Vegas District and Colorado region will be read uh, the final funeral rites. And we'll take that of the nation. And before the nation, uh, COPUSA comes, we want to inform you that we have a table at the back. So those of you who will not be able to stay for the final funeral rites, you can drop your donations when you walk out of the door. Thank you. Apostle John Ofori. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saint. Psalm 116, verse 15. The late Mrs. Irene Ben Ousu and her husband, Pastor John Kenneth Ousu, were called into full-time ministry in 2013. She meritoriously served the Church of Pentecost USA Inc. in three districts, Sacramento, Richmond, and Las Vegas, until her sudden demise on February 21st, 2022. As of Mami Irene, as she was affectionately called, had passion for ministry and worked diligently with her husband and positively impacted many lives. Mrs. Irene Ousu was soft-spoken with a pleasant and a warm personality. She was always beaming with smiles wherever she met people. She was loving and caring to adult youth and children and respected everyone. She easily established a good rapport with church members and could be seen greeting and socializing with members after church service and other programs. In all the districts Mama Irene served with her husband, she demonstrated herself as a rare gallant soldier of the cross. She was a woman of prayer, worship, and she preached with passion. She was a good mother, a friend, a counselor, and a mentor. Mrs. Irene Ousu was a blessing to many women, young ladies, youth, and children in the church. Wherever station they were posted to serve, she initiated coordinated and organized women empowerment program, which governance and energized the women ministry. The program brought together many women and men from other Christian faith community and uplifted the Lord Jesus Christ. Mama Irene Ousu, as most of us knew her, was endowed with a powerful voice. She inspired and touched many lives both within and outside the church with her music ministry. She was very passionate about music 
and encourage other musicians to serve the Lord with their gift and talent. The online church in the house, Pentecostal Praises and Worship, she initiated in 2021 during the COVID-19 pandemic was a testament to her way of serving the Lord and blessing people with her anointed voice. Mama Irene's sudden departure was a shock to the Church of Pentecost USA Incorporated. However, we take consolation of the fact that she faithfully, diligently, and wholeheartedly served her Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. She has fought a good fight, finished the race well, and has kept the faith. She is now in a better place where there's no more sickness, suffering, sorrow, and sadness. Mrs. Aaron Ben Ousu will be greatly missed by the ministers and their wives, the presbytery, and the entire membership of the Church of Pentecost USA Incorporated. May her good deeds follow her and may her memory be forever be blessed. May her soul rest peacefully in the Lord. Yes, let's put our hands together. At this moment, we want to receive uh, the exhortation from Pastor Martin Yenzu, the Student Services Coordinator of the Pentecost Biblical Seminary. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for bringing us together uh, this, this day. I want to appreciate our chairman, our IMB, our general secretary, and our fathers who are on the line with us. Also, my national head and the executive and all the ministers. Pastor Osu, sorry for the loss. Um, this morning, I want to share with us the word of God from Hebrews chapter 13. Verses 9, following. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priests, as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the city gates in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips that acknowledge his name. Do, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Amen. I would like to exalt us on a message of entitled, We Have No Lasting City Here. We Have No Lasting City Here. The writer of Hebrews is telling us not to be led by diverse and strange teachings. Perhaps those in the day at the time were being led by all kinds of teachings, food and things that don't matter. And from our elders tribute to the mom, we heard what he, she had told him to tell us, not to let matters of this life entangle us and right on point with the message. Do not be led away by food or things that don't matter. But he says that for it is good for the heart to be strengthened. The strength of all believers is the grace of God. It's the grace of God that strengthens our hearts. And I pray that even now, the grace of the Lord God Almighty will strengthen our broken hearts. And then he goes on to verse 10 and says that we have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. I thank the Lord that she gave us a woman of God. Her life is a testament that indeed we have come to the funeral of a woman of God. She served the Lord through and through. From the altar of the Lord, she ate from the right altar, served from the right altar, and ministered from the right altar. Hallelujah. And then he says that for the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy place. In other words, 
the high priest will go to the outer camp, kill the animal, but they'll leave the animals burnt over there. And then they'll bring the blood of the animal to the altar. In the same way, the body of Jesus will hang outside the city gates. And then his blood was presented into the holies of holies, where he bled for us. And then he's saying, because of Jesus hanging on the tree outside the city camp, let us leave the issues of life, food, and things that don't matter, and go to Jesus outside the camp. I am glad to announce to us that our dear mother left everything she could enjoy in this life and went outside the camp, much straight forward to Jesus Christ, and then surrounded all her life to the Lord Almighty. And so now it is our turn. She, 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 she loved herself with a passion of winning souls and praying for the souls of mortal men that will find their way in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now the author, the, the writer is saying that, for we have no lasting city. We have no abiding city here. Our world has now shown us nothing is sudden in life anymore. Look at how nations are tumbling over other nations. Look at how human beings are in despair and helpless. We all look at the televisions. We cannot do anything about it. That gives us an impression that we have no abiding city here. David, after he had gathered the, the, the item for the building of the temple for his son to take over, in his praises to God, made this statement in 1 Chronicles 29, 13. It says that we are, for, we, we are here for only a moment. Visitors and strangers in the land as our ancestors were before us. Our days on earth are like a passing shadow, gone so soon without a trace. These are the words of King David unto us. Now, the fact is that older people die, younger people die. But if we be true to ourselves, we know that it is not how long you live, but it is how good you live. It is how good you live. And I thank God that within this short span, God has given us a woman of God who has made a huge impression upon our lives. When Jacob went to, with his children to appear before Pharaoh in Egypt and was summoned before Pharaoh, Jacob said that, I have traveled this earth for 130 hard years, but my life has been short compared to the lives of my ancestors. Then Jacob departed. Jacob thought he lived for 130 years. They were short. But through Jacob, we had the sons of Israel. Through the sons of Israel, we had Jesus who came to die for us. So though Jacob think that he lived short, he through his lineage, we have all been blessed. It is not how long you live. It is how good you live. Jesus Christ himself before he came, had John the Baptist who came ahead of him. They were only six months apart. John the Baptist did not live longer than Jesus, but through his ministry, he prepared the way for the savior of the world. And John the Baptist had made a huge impact in our world. He lived very young, but had a very powerful ministry. Jesus himself, how long did he live? Though Jesus died young, but now all our life, hang on him. It is not how long you live, but how well you live. And I pray that now that the onus is on us, she has fought her battle war. It is up to you and I now to live a life worthy of our calling so that we'll be able to shine Jesus Christ through all of our lives. Hallelujah. And then he says that, but we seek the city that is to come. Hebrews 12, 28 says that, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. When the writer was comparing Mount Sinai to Mount Zion and how terrified the people of God were at Sinai, and they could not even hear God's voice, but told Moses, go and listen and then come and tell us. He said, for us now, we have received an unshakable kingdom. Therefore, let us worship God with reverence and oh, This is the city to come. This is the city that we are looking at. We have no abiding city here, but we have an enduring city, which is to come and our mother has gone ahead of us. Praise the Lord. Philippians 3.20 says that, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that we will be like his glorious body. What a promise. What a promise. 
When Abraham was asked to leave the land of his fathers and go to a place he did not know, the Bible records that for he was looking forward to the city with which had the foundation whose architect and builder is God. We have a city that is not made with human hands. We have an enduring and a lasting city ahead of us where there'll be no weeping, no tears, no sorrow, no broken heart, but we shall be with the Lord forever. That is the city we are looking up to. Our hearts are strengthened, even in this time. And then the writer comes to the end and says that through him, let us continually offer up sacrifices. Let us do more. Our hearts are broken. The heart of the family is broken. But he says through him, let us continually offer up sacrifices of praise to God. That is the fruit of the lips that acknowledges the name of the Lord. May we acknowledge the name of the Lord even in our hardship, even in our pain, even in our brokenness. And I thank God that as I watch the screen, our mother has been thanking the Lord even in difficult times, in death and in life. We know him, the Lord, and we shall offer our bodies even unto him. Nobody says Lord and then says no. The day we surrendered our life to the Lord Jesus, we said yes in death, yes in health, yes in sickness, whatever the outcome may be, once you surrender yourself to the Lord, you cannot say no. And our mother, even in death and sickness, has said yes, Lord, to my dear fathers of the faith and mothers of the faith, to our dear pastors and wives, to our gallant soldiers, elders of our church, to the leaders of our church, to the families gathered here, to our fellow saints of this grace. I am here to let you know our hearts are broken as a church, but we look up to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us now serve well. Let us now do more. For through him, we have an enduring and abiding city where we shall go to be with the Lord. He promised us, my strength is made perfect. Even in your weakness, now let the strength of the Lord manifest even in our weaknesses. The Lord is our shield. The Lord is our strength. He is our refuge and our hiding place, even in time of trouble. Hallelujah. Dear Pastor Usu, my dear elder, Raphael, Samuel, I want to let you know that mommy has departed, but the Lord is with you. The good times, the bad times, the challenging times that you have held, even John Jr. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord embolden you. May the Lord cause you even to do more now in the memory of our dear mother. So we all know that if she was with us, she'll be urging you on. Do more for the Lord. Do more for the Lord. Let this one be a challenge for you that now you will serve the Lord more than you have ever had. Verse 16, as I conclude, do not neglect to do good and share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And then Hebrews 10, 24 says that, let us consider how to stir one another up in love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day of the Lord draw near. As we see the day of the Lord draw near, we need a church. Let's come together as a church. Because the church is the hope of the world. The church is the gathering place of the saints. So as the coming of the Lord draw near, we need each other. Now let's go and strengthen our bond and serve the Lord. This will not break the family. This will not break the church. The church of God is marching on. Now our faith is more strengthened. May the Lord help us. May he grant us grace, even in Jesus' name. Amen. You can do better. You can do better. Oh, who need my friend? Nami, yeah, oh, Masa, see Mini Vipa Oh, how 
We want to thank God for the message that has come to us. Within a minute, we are going to ask the family members to please stand uh, as we will ask Apostle Lata to pray for them. But let's learn a few things. We come to funeral and we need to pay attention to the tributes and others. You still have your wife with you. You still have your husbands with you. Let's continue to cherish one another. Don't take things for granted. The next thing, one of the boys mentioned, they were raised well. Church, let's put our hands together for our mother. Indeed, to raise boys is very, very difficult. I have one, but she had four of them. At, at, at most five, because the pastor too was the firstborn. And to raise five boys in the house is a difficult work. But we could see that he raised them well, listening to their testimony and how they bid farewell to mommy. Whether mom is here or not, whatever the Lord has said concerning your life will definitely come to pass. So do not worry. She's even at a better place, cheering you on. You can do it. Those who want to become president of the United States, indeed, it will happen. Senators in this nation, indeed, it will happen. Your mom was a minister. Those who want to be in full-time ministry, it will definitely happen. So let us encourage one another, not allowing the situation to break us. Family members, can you please stand, even as we ask Apostle Lata to come and pray? And the rest of us, can you bow down your heads, even as you sit? Only the family members will remain standing in Apostle Lata. It is well. This afternoon, we give you glory, honor, and adoration. We thank you for what you have done and what you continue to do for your church. You have come to admonish us that we don't have a city that abide, that we have a city that endure, which we are all looking for, which one day we shall be in that city. Father, we thank you. And therefore, you have also told us that not how long we live, but how we live our life. Father, we are very grateful unto you for your word that you have given to us this morning. We are praying that, Lord, help us to live a life that will praise you, a life that will glorify your name, so that when that city that we are looking for, when, we, when, when that city appears, we will not be found wanting. This day, oh Lord, I pray and commit the family into your hand that our sister has departed with. I pray in the name of Jesus that God, you console them and comfort them and strengthen them. May your grace be abound unto them, O Lord. Father God, it is only grace that can enable them to be strengthened. I bring the family before you, O Lord. Continue to be with them. Keep them as an apple of your arm. 
And Father, hold them under the shadow of your wings. And may you surrender with the strength of your deliverance. In every way, everything that they do, may you continue to be with them, O oh Lord. I pray against this sickness that took our mother away. I pray if by any means, by any way, it tried to pour its way in any of them, we came against it in the name of Jesus. And also I bring the whole church community into your hand. If anywhere the enemy tried to find a way to bring this sickness unto us, we cancel and notify it in the name of Jesus. You don't want to hear and see this sickness anymore, any longer. Father, continue to abide with us. Continue to protect this family. Be with them, guide them in everything that, that they do. Cause your face to shine upon them at all times, wherever they go. In Jesus' name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. We have the mother of Auntie Aren. Ma, please come. Let's put our hands together as Mama is coming. Please come. You can take your mask just for a minute. Church, let us be on our feet too. In a clap of friend to the Lord, appreciate the life of our man. Oh, you can do better. You can do better. You can do better. You can do better. Now you can take your seats. Man, on behalf of the Church of Pentecost in Venetia, we want to appreciate you for giving us such a wonderful person, Aaron. I know it's difficult. You've lost one, but only in this nation. The pastor's wife, as of Mami Fua, a woman, a woman, a woman, a woman, a woman, a woman, a but one a car who hang in a omo a yo ma. A bet was a bompire ma. A bet was what I. But yes, yes, eh. O banner on coy. O ma be bray a wooden. As of mammy foa. More a day more. All the pastors. This is our mom. Let's look for her. Let's pray for her. Let's care for her. Hallelujah. Let's care for her. What Irene was here and she was doing, phone calls, occasional gifts, and other things. She is our mother. May the Lord be with you. Amen. Announcements. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. We are living here in the next few seconds. Uh, right from here, we're going to Mount Venom Memorial Park. And uh, our mom will be buried at the mausoleum. And because of the limited space over there, we all of us can get to the mausoleum. So please, we want to encourage the family and uh, our, fa our fathers uh, to uh, go to the mausoleum for the area. Please, let's take note of that. Not all of us can fit that space. So please bear with us. All others, the clergy will go to the Dury Plaza Hotel. It's, the address is on the platform, please, for the necessary refreshment. And all other guests will also go to the India Cultural Center for the necessary refreshment. So please take note of that. Uh, we have vans available. If you need a van, we have a van going to the Dury Plaza. And uh, our fathers will also need a van to the barrier park. We also have a van. And all other guys that also need van, we have van going to the Indian Cultural Center. Uh, if you are leaving today, if you flew in and you're going back, please, the van will be available at the Indian Cultural Center, 3 p.m. to take you to the airport. Please kindly take note of that. We have the donation table back there. If you want to give your donation, maybe right from here, you're going home straight. We know you have busy schedule. 
Uh, please make sure you support us with your donation. There's a table over there. And there will be a table at the Indian Cultural Center too. Uh, before you go home, you do that. Uh, the next thing is also on Sunday, we have a Thanksgiving service. Uh, so please. The time for the funeral, yes, is 2 p.m. exactly. Uh, making sure that we don't spend much time at wherever we have our refreshment. And those who are going to the Indian Cultural Center, that's the same place that we have the final funeral. So that's before you get there, everything will be ready. Uh, right after that, you just join the funeral, final funeral service over there. The Sunday service will be at the Richmond Center at 11 a.m. God bless you. So before we take the final pass, uh, file pass, we want to invite Apostle Yadam to give us the closing prayer and benediction. Shall we please rise? We want to pray. Shall we remain silent before the Lord? Before I pray, I want to give you the opportunity. If you came here and you have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior, the message came to us saying that it is not about how long you live here on earth, but how well, how good. But here on earth, there is no better way to live than to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. He is the only one given to us by God, the one whom God has set his approval to be the Savior of mankind. If you believe in him with your heart, that he is Lord, he died for your sins, and when he died, God, raised him back to life on the third day, and you confess so with your mouth, you will be saved. If you want to accept Jesus as Lord, so that you have a better life here on earth and even beyond, wherever you are, pray this prayer with me. And after the prayer, you would have to see any of the ministers. Say, dear Lord, I know you are the son of God. Because of my sins, you came to die. On the third day, you rose back to life. Today, I accept you as my Lord and personal savior. I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Father, we want to thank you and we want to bless you. Thank you so much for a life well lived. At this moment, as we are taking the cups of our sister here departed for burial, we pray committing ourselves into your hands, knowing that man shall not live here on earth forever, for it is appointed unto every man once to die, after which we shall all appear before you to give account of our stewardship and we shall be rewarded for the way we lived our lives here on earth. Upon this, we are departing. We ask for your continued presence to be with us and we bring the rest of the program into your hands. We pray that you will lead and you will guide and all those who just prayed, accepting you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior, we commit them into your holy hands, O oh God. May you receive them, and may you register your presence by your spirit in their lives, in Jesus' mighty name. And now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and lift his countenance upon you through his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Amen.